Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ask Alicia, the weekly series where you ask me questions and I answer them. Maybe. Let's get to your first question this week. First question comes from Karima. Hi again, Karima. Karima says, Hi, Alicia. Could you please tell me what can't you tell means? Thanks. Yeah. We use the word tell to mean understand. So in casual conversations, tell means understand. So it doesn't mean like share information. It means understand or no. We use this a lot in questions. So for example, how can you tell? How can you tell means how do you know? So can you tell? How can you tell? This is quite a common uh, pattern with this word. We would use can't you tell in a situation where we're trying to confirm that the listener does not understand or does not notice something. Can't you tell? So we're using the negative can't because we're confirming. Can't you tell? So we would use this in a situation where maybe the speaker has some like change or there's something that they hope the listener notices, but maybe the listener does not notice and the speaker wants to confirm. For example, I got a haircut. Can't you tell? This is an expensive suit. Can't you tell? So another way of saying can't you tell is like, aren't you able to notice or aren't you able to understand? So you're confirming something like, I got a haircut, can't you tell? It's like the speaker is surprised that the listener doesn't notice. So these are the situations where we would use the negative, can't you tell? When we use the positive form, can you tell, we're actually asking for information. So an example is like, oh no, I spilled coffee on my white pants. Can you tell? Meaning, are you able to notice or can you see that I spilled coffee on my pants, for example? I went to a really smoky restaurant for lunch. Can you tell? So are you able to notice like because of the way I smell? So can you tell is asking for information. Like can you see, can you notice? Can't you tell is a confirmation question. So just remember, tell is used to mean understand. I hope that that helps you. Thanks very much for the question. Okay, let's move on to your next question. Next question comes from Bakhtar Khan. Hi, Bakhtar. Bakhtar says, hi, Alicia. What is the meaning of rather? I really can't use it in a sentence. Okay, um, there are a couple of different ways to use rather. First, we can use rather to introduce preferences. So a great example of this is, would you rather A or B? So we're introducing our options with the word rather. Then when we give our preference, we can use rather to do that. We can say, I would rather A than B. So this is giving us options. We can use it to give those options and we can use it to explain our choice. You can think of rather like prefer, meaning you would desire one thing more than another thing. So I would rather drink coffee than tea. She would rather watch a movie at home than go to a theater. So rather sounds a bit more casual than prefer. The second use of rather then is to use the word to mean a better way of saying something that I just said. I use social media every day. Rather, I check social media every day. I don't always post. So when we use rather in a sentence like this, it means a better or perhaps a more accurate way to say what I just said is this. So in the first sentence, I said, I use social media every day. Then I said rather, which means more accurately or a better way to say that is I check social media every day. So you can hear with my intonation, I'm focusing on the word that I'm changing. In the first sentence, my verb was use. I use social media every day. When I use this rather pattern, I'm emphasizing with my voice the change that I have made. So I check social media every day. That's the thing that's more accurate. So when we use rather, this is kind of a common uh, emphasis pattern. Let's look at one more example. He hates going on business trips. Rather, he hates the paperwork required for going on business trips. So in that case, we're making the statement a little bit more accurate and we use rather to explain that. 
So he doesn't hate business trips, he hates the paperwork he has to do for business trips. So we use rather in this way as well. So those are two ways to use the word rather. I hope that this helped you understand. Thanks very much for the question. Okay, let's move on to your next question. Next question this week comes from Tan Tishin. Hi, Tan. Tan says, number one, what's the difference between important, essential, and significant? And two, what is the meaning of time after time, year after year, or day after day? Okay, let's look at your first question, important, essential, and significant. Um, so important means it requires attention, something that requires our attention. Some examples. We have some important news to share. It's important we have a meeting soon. Essential means important and we cannot do without it. Like if we don't have this thing, something negative might happen. Some examples. Healthcare is essential for all citizens. It's essential we solve these problems as soon as possible. So significant means something very noticeable or to a great degree, to a great extent. Examples. There was a significant increase in profits last year. We lost a significant amount of inventory in the storm. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to the differences between important, essentially, and significant. Now let's go on to your question about year by year or day by day and those kinds of patterns. We just use these to emphasize that over time something happened. So like for example, year by year she improved her English speaking abilities. It means like as years passed, something occurred gradually. So day by day, he grew more and more proficient at playing the trumpet, for example. So it's referring to something that continues over a period of time that's expressed with this day by day or year by year. So if it's an everyday action, you could use day by day to mean like um, a child growing, for example. Like day by day, the child grew stronger. Or if it's something that's more long-term, like language studies, you could say year by year, her English speaking abilities grew. So we're talking about a continuing action over time, usually that grows or like that changes in some way. So we can use these kinds of expressions to talk about that progress. I hope that that helps you. Okay, thanks very much for the question. Let's move on to your next question. Next question this week comes from Bruno Donizete Bueno. Hi, Bruno. Bruno says, hi, Alicia. Please tell me what is the difference between I go and I will go? Okay. Um, I go begins a present tense statement. So that's something that happens now, like part of a schedule or just something that you regularly do. Examples. I go shopping every weekend. I go to the dentist once a year. I will go is a future tense statement, a simple future tense statement. When you use will, you're talking about something that's probably in the near future and maybe something you've just made a decision about. Examples. I'll go with the latte, please. I think I'll go to the movies after work. So, will go is a future tense statement. I go is a present tense statement. Hope that that helps you. Thanks for the question. Okay, let's move on to your next question. Next question for this week comes from Constantine. Hi, Constantine. Constantine says, hi, Alicia. Is there a difference between because and cause? It seems to me they have a similar meaning, yes? Yes, these are the same. So, because and cuz have the same meaning because. Um, we write cuz without b at the beginning just to be more casual, to be a little bit more friendly. So you can use them in the same way. I would recommend if, however, you are writing something like an essay or paper, uh, something formal, make sure to use because. So always spell the full word because. On the other hand, you may also find an even shorter version, uh, or rather a shorter spelling of this word. C-U-Z, cuz. Uh, so cuz also means because, uh, but we just use this cuz because it's quick and easy to type, uh, but it's also just the way that native speakers say because in everyday speech. We don't always say because so clearly. We use cuz, like I'm going to the store cuz I want to get something to eat. So cuz, C-U-Z, is something you might see a lot in texts or on social media as well. So yes, because, cause and cuz all have the same meaning. 
because. Thanks very much for the question. Hope that that helps. Okay, that's everything that I have for you for this week. Thanks, as always, for sending your questions. Remember, you can send them to me at englishclass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. Of course, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check us out at englishclass101.com for some other things that can help you with your studies. Thanks very much for watching this week's episode of Ask Alicia, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.